Chapter 30. No More Hiding. Allie kept close to Dublin as people emerged from their brick homes to examine the damage from the most recent bombing. Neighbors began shouting at each other across the streets, rushing to aid those homes now buried in a heap of burning rubble. Dublin stopped for a moment in the street, having trouble differentiating the smells surrounding them. The thick smell of burning wood filled the London air as the flames lit the skies in a haunting sunset shade. Allie continued to follow Dublin to the end of the street where she saw a stone bridge ahead of her. Dublin pulled her headlong toward the bridge, following Sim's scent further into the heart of the city. As they began to cross the dark bridge with caution, Allie heard a motorized fire truck blare its siren ahead of her. She reached down and grabbed Dublin, pulling him to the sidewalk to make room. The truck drove across the bridge toward her. The man standing on the running board of the truck stared at the strange-looking girl wearing padded armor with her dog as he rode past. Allie and Dublin scurried onward across the bridge once the coast was clear, only to find another horrifying sight on the other side. The city was burning to the ground ahead of them. Allie could see Tower Bridge further down the river, cast in a faint, murky shadow. In the opposite direction, she spotted the dome of St. Paul's Cathedral engulfed in flames. The many sights she had grown longing to see in pictures of London were now overshadowed by a grim and helpless visage. In its darkest hour, London was now burning and clinging to life. Allie feared that in the mass of panic and chaos, she might never find Sim in time. She turned back to Dublin and placed Sim's waistcoat under his nose once more allowing him to get a fresh scent. Putting his nose back to the ground, Dublin pulled Allie further into the shadows of the buildings ahead. Allie glanced down at her watch. She had one hour and 46 minutes left. She shuddered as the haunting wail of the air raid sirens began to drown out all the other sounds around her. She hurried to catch up with Dublin as he crouched low to the ground, trembling. It's okay, buddy, she whispered, kneeling to wrap her arm around his neck to keep him close. Keep going. You can do it. Dublin looked left and right, his amber eyes wide with sheer panic. He suddenly broke free from Allie's grip and dashed down the street ahead. Allie hollered for Dublin to come back through her helmet. Dublin ran toward a large group of people now racing through the streets toward a shelter in the city's underground. Dublin stopped at a familiar black pair of boots standing next to the crowd and barked repeatedly. Sim looked down with surprise to see his black and white border collie friend barking at his feet. He raised his gaze and looked down the street behind him. Allie stood in her deep red armor and helmet, staring back at him, the pale blue visor obscuring her face through a thick cloud of smoke. Sim removed his helmet and ran his shaking hand through his sweaty hair. Allie felt her stomach rise to her throat as he looked at her. Are you? Sim muttered, unable to believe his eyes. Allie hurried toward him as she pulled the helmet off her head. Thank God I found you. Sim's pained expression darkened. He let out an aggravated sigh, seeing the face beneath the helmet. Damn it, Allie. I told you to stay behind. I know. I know. But you never gave me the chance to tell you something important. Her voice trembled at the end as she fought to keep her composure. What? I know you said to stay, but after everything we've been through together, you should know by now I've always got your back. Sim sighed and looked up at her calmly. You brought me back to your world, running headlong toward danger whenever the moment arose. You carried me to safety while I laid helpless at the beginning of time. And now it's my turn to carry you. We are in this together now, and I won't ever let you go out here on your own. Never again. Because you need someone to watch your back. Because I love you. Sim's stunned expression brought an unexpected smile to Allie's lips. Allie stood before him with her own raw emotions now open to him. Sim stared at her with his brown and blue eyes, a gentle glimmer lighting up his face. Allie's smile turned to a laugh as she wiped her eyes relieved that the truth was finally out. She'd never felt surer of anything in her life, willing to chase across the ages for him. Moving closer, 
Sim wrapped his arm around her waist. He gazed deeply into her eyes. Allie looked back, losing herself in the moment. The sirens faded from her mind. Their eyes closed as their lips met. All at once, every woe and fear in Allie's mind disappeared as Sim's shattered past seemed sewn back together with each passing second of their long-lasting kiss. <clears throat> Grunted a voice from behind Sim. Allie's eyes opened. An oriental man, dressed in a buttoned shirt and pants, smiled at her. Allie's face turned red as she broke away from their kiss. Sim released his arm from Allie's waist, playing the moment off like it was nothing as he cleared his throat. Uh, Allie, this is Zane, our lost traveler. Not to break up the beautiful reunion or anything, but we have a problem overhead, said Zane in English, pointing up at the sky. Allie and Sim looked up to the sky and saw the shimmer of plane wings in the searchlights, accompanied by the humming of engines. The anti-aircraft cannons began to fire across the city, piercing the sky with streaks of light, exploding like fireworks above the planes. Everyone to the underground! Sim shouted, pointing over to the group of people making their way down into the underground. Sim handed Zane his helmet and picked Dublin up off the ground. He pushed through the crowd, with Allie and Zane right behind. The human traffic jam left them standing at the entrance to the underground station, waiting for people ahead of them to file down the stairs. Sim looked up and spotted bombs falling from the planes, accompanied by a barrage of sharp whistles in the air. The crowd's murmurs turned to cries of fear and panic, with everyone pushing to get in the tunnel. Everyone stay calm and keep moving, hollered Sim. His words held little weight over the crowd. Allie read the sign hanging from the stairs. Monument Station. Sim waved Allie and Zane down the stairs before him. He squeezed through an opening onto the top stair just as a nearby three-story building exploded into flames. Sim rushed down the stairs with Dublin in his arms. He suddenly slipped on the stairs and stumbled into Allie. The crowd began to thin around them as Allie helped Sim back to his feet. They hurried down the stairs into a white tile-lined hallway with people lingering at both sides. The shaking explosions overhead shook the tile ceiling free. Sim, Allie, and Zane pressed onward through the crowded tunnel until it opened up into a sanctuary of people waiting at the station platform. They came to a stop and found a vacant place on the station floor. A red train car sat parked in the station with people resting inside, trying to sleep. Zane sat down on the floor of the station with his back to the wall. Allie sat down next to him as Sim placed Dublin back down on the ground. He rested with his padded back against the wall beside Allie. They all let free a heavy sigh of relief. Sim took his helmet from Zane and rested it in his lap. He stared at the scratched orange visor for a moment. What were you doing when I found you? Asked Allie. The fires were starting to surround a nearby shelter, so Zane and I stayed to help the firefighters and the wardens evacuate everyone to the nearest station. Since you'd already found Zane, why did you bother sticking around? Well, we didn't feel right just leaving everyone without helping, said Zane. Allie looked over at him, confused by his clear understanding of his strange situation. I already told Zane everything, said Sim to Allie. A street warden found him wandering around. He helped him take refuge in a charitable woman's home offering shelter. I asked the wardens for help, and they told me where he was within the first hour I arrived. We spent the last raid hunkered down in Zane's hostess's basement shelter, so I used the time to explain everything to him. Oh. So you asked for help without my aid for once? Sim snickered. <laughs> I, uh, asked myself, what would you do? That and I was afraid of what I would have to say to you when, uh, when I got back. Sim added, rubbing the back of his neck. Allie smiled at him, still feeling the warm love in her heart from earlier. So, you're both lost travelers like me, huh? Zane looked over at the two of them. Allie and Sim both looked over at Zane and nodded. Yeah, sworn to the duty of saving others like us and preventing cosmic annihilation, replied Allie. <laughs> That's a hell of a job description. Well, 
I suppose I'm glad to know there's someone out there looking out for all of us. What did you do before? Me? Well, I was a pyrotechnician from L.A. Replied Zane. Allie raised one eyebrow and looked at him quizzically. Sim rested his back against the tiles, watching her out of the corner of his eye as he spoke. Ironic, I know. I made fireworks back home for a manufacturing company. Then moved to Hollywood using my talents for films. Spent my whole life creating explosions. Always figured I'd die to one. Just never imagined it'd be like this. Uh, that is, until your boyfriend over there found me. He's not my... Allie stopped as she looked over at Sim. Sim looked at her with a shrug. Hey, what I just saw out there was obviously two people madly in love with each other. You guys can say whatever you want, but I'd say you guys are boyfriend and girlfriend. Zane replied. Allie snickered and rested back against the wall. She placed her hand out for Sim to hold. Sim looked down and saw her gloved palm facing up. Without hesitation, he reached out and took her hand. Together, they sat in the station, listening to the bombs falling overhead. Dublin rested his head on Allie's lap as she stroked the top of his head. You... You think this station is safe? We're down pretty low. I think we'll be fine. Sim replied, offering as much reassurance as he could into his voice. Zane eyed the roof of the station, trying his best to relax. You know, Sam's already told me everything about you. Allie looked over at Zane. I hope he said good things. Well, yeah, I'd say so. At least it sounded like he was telling you everything. It was more like he rambled on about how conflicted he felt leaving you behind. He talked so fast, I could barely make out a word of it. My head was already spinning from the notion of being in the wrong time. Then this lunatic shows up dressed in armor and starts jabbering on about this girl he left behind. If it wasn't for the bombs and sirens, I probably would have admitted I'd lost my mind. Allie looked over at Sim pretending to be resting with his eyes closed. She could see the blush creeping up his face. Sim opened one lazy eye. What? I was nervous about what to say to you. Being stuck in a shelter for an hour with him? I needed to vent to someone. He's not always like that, Zane. Thank you. Said Sim with eyes closed again. He's usually bossier and complaints when things don't go his way. Sim opened his eyes and glared over at her. <laughs> Allie and Zane both laughed. The echoes of their laughter lifted the spirits of everyone within hearing distance. Sim shook his head and playfully scolded, knowing she was right, for the most part. The scratch of a record player suddenly filled the station. Sim, Allie, and Zane looked over to see a young man winding up a record player he had dragged with him down into the shelter. Jumping into the music, the trumpets on the record began to play a smooth melody. Artie Shaw, begin the begin. Muttered Sim. Allie glanced away from the record player to watch Sim tap his feet to the beat. Wait, you know this song? She asked. We have records I listen to back home. Seeing Allie's expression of surprise, Sim spoke with a satisfied grin. Hey, I'm not completely uncultured. I don't know my history, but I know my music. Allie shook her head at him and laid back on his chest. An elderly couple at the end of the station stood up and began to sway in rhythm to the music while the whole station watched. The entire station watched with warm smiles, seemingly forfeiting their fears and woes to the music. Allie stood up from the floor and tugged on Sim's hand. Well, if you like music so much, then you must know how to dance. I'm enjoying sitting right now, thank you very much. Said Sim, refusing to stand. See, Zane? Like I said, whiny and bossy. Zane laughed. Sim shot a look up at her. He knew what she was trying to do, and he was willing to fall for it. He placed his helmet down on the floor. All right. Sim said, standing up. Sim took her right hand and wrapped his left around her waist. Counting the beats, the two of them began to swing back and forth to the music, swaying to the rhythm. Zane sat and watched with Dublin on the floor, 
enjoying the show with a heartfelt smile on his face. Gazing into each other's eyes, Sim and Allie danced to the music that echoed throughout the station. One by one, other couples began dancing, filling the station with an unexpected and welcome lightness. Allie and Sim laughed, enjoying the moment as the music played, swaying to the beat. Wait a second, said Sim, looking at Allie with a new, concerned look. He stopped dancing and released his grip on her. If you're here, that means we've lost time. Allie stopped as well and realized she had completely forgotten. Allie looked down at Merrick's watch and saw they had only 18 minutes left. Allie turned her eyes back towards Sim with an uneasy expression. Zane, we gotta go, said Sim, hurrying over to pick his helmet up off the floor. What? Why? Zane asked, confused. There's only so much time we can stay here before this world is destroyed. Yeah, but you said we had four hours. Zane stood up. Since Allie's here now, it's more like we only have... 15 minutes, replied Sim. Oh, shit! Zane's eyes widened. The raid isn't over yet, said Allie, reaching down to grab her helmet off the ground. We don't have a choice. We'll have to go out anyway and just be as fast as possible. Sim replied, putting the helmet back on his head. I'll carry Dublin. You two lead the way. You remember the way back. Allie nodded. Should be just across the bridge and back down the road. Maybe ten minutes away if we hurry? Well, come on! Let's get moving then! Approaching the top of the station tunnel, Sim, Allie, and Zane could still hear the bombs whistling overhead, accompanied by the barrage of artillery fire. Sim carried Dublin in his arms as Allie and Zane led the way ahead of him. The block had been ripped to shreds by the explosions. Nearby buildings blazed in ruins. The whistling of distant bombs falling and exploding all around made it difficult for them to speak. They all stopped under cover beneath the station tunnel entrance. All right, on the count of three. Run and don't stop until we get there. Zane, stay between us. You got it? Asked Sim over his helmet speaker. Allie and Zane looked back at him and nodded. They looked outside the station, ready to make a run for it. White and green fluorescent flames burned in the streets, illuminating the buildings ahead of them. On three. One, said Sim, starting the count. Allie took a deep breath as she put on her helmet. Two. Zane clenched his hands tight, ready to run for his life. Three. All together, the three of them rushed out from the station with Allie leading the way. Zane kept close to her back, doing his best to avoid stumbling over the debris littering the road. Sim followed, trying to comfort Dublin in his arms as his little heart pounded, hearing the whistling and buzzing of planes overhead. Allie reached the end of the block and stopped abruptly. Oh, no. A brick building lining the way to the bridge was now destroyed in the street, blocking the way. The bricks and rubble from the collapsed building towered over their heads. I said don't stop, said Sim, hurrying up next to Allie. He stopped and looked up at the collapsed building blocking their path. Sim scanned from side to side for another way around, only to find the rubble blocked their path from one side of the street to the other. We could climb it, suggested Zane. No way. Those bricks are red hot from the flames, and they look like they could crumble on us at any moment. How much time do we have? Asked Sim. Allie looked down at her watch. Fourteen minutes. We'll have to go around. We don't have time. Allie replied with a voice of desperation. We have to try. The honk of a car rolling up behind them suddenly captured their attention. They looked back to see a pair of bright headlights driving toward them through the smoke, dodging and weaving around the large pieces of rubble. A small, open, tan-colored jeep pulled up alongside them. They all look lost. You need a ride? Shouted Erlen, sitting in the driver's seat dressed in a military uniform. Without hesitating, the three of them hurried toward the jeep. Allie and Zane both hopped into the back. Sim handed Dublin to Allie. Allie held Dublin tightly in her lap as Sim hopped into the front seat next to Erland and removed his helmet. Best buckle up, shouted Erland. Uh, wait. There aren't any seatbelts back here. Well, <laughs> I guess you better hold on then. Erland replied with a chuckle as he revved the engine. He cranked the jeep into first gear and sped around in a U-turn. 
Sim held on for dear life as Erland sped up, zigzagging through the streets around the craters and piles of rubble. Okay, now I know you're not imaginary, said Sim, holding on with every turn. Erland laughed. I hope not, for your sake. Otherwise, you've trusted a ghost to drive. Erland honked the horn as he drove toward a group of firefighters spraying water at a nearby burning building. The firefighters all jumped out of the way. The jeep's tires squealed as they rounded a narrow corner, knocking over a collection of trash cans in the way. The jeep raced headlong toward a wooden fence closing the alley between the buildings on either side. Zane and Allie exchanged concerned glances. Everyone duck, shouted Erland. Sim lowered his head under the dashboard as Zane and Allie crouched behind the seats in front of them. The jeep crashed through the wooden fence, then jumped to the low wall beyond lining the next street. Everyone screamed as the jeep sailed through the air before landing. The front bumper grinded against the ground, shooting sparks out from beneath them. Erland suddenly swerved to avoid the river's edge. Zane and Allie both shouted, desperately trying to keep hold of Dublin. Erland laughed and shifted gears. Oh. Remember, in case of an emergency, please use the exit located nearest to you. Where have you been? Waiting for you to make your moves, kid. Erland replied, swerving around the corner and across the bridge. Ugh. I think I'm gonna be sick. Groaned Zane, holding his stomach. Oh, please, don't. I have to return this thing to my CEO the same way that I found it. Shouted Erland. Lesson number one, Allie. Always have an escape plan. Actually, that's lesson number five, or maybe six. You know my name? Of course I do. I know Zan's too, and Dublin's. Though I should tell you that's not his real name. Not like it really matters. Allie could see the plane still flying overhead as they began crossing the bridge. A new barrage of bombs whistled overhead across the city. No! I mean, how are you here? Asked Sim, holding tightly to the car frame. <laughs> All in good time, kid. Now's not the time for answers. You left me! You left me and Otto! And Aria! Why? Why? You just left us! Erland's playful banter and smile faded. He kept his eyes on the road, glancing over at Sim out of the corner of his eye. We had to do everything without you! First you left me! Then she left me! I spent two years, two years, needing your help! Otto and I both! And now I find out you've been alive this whole time! Said Sim, lashing out with anger. Erlen spoke with a sorrowful voice. I'm sorry, kid. I didn't have a choice. Sim sat back in his seat and lowered his head. Erlen dodged his way across the other end of the bridge nearly hitting the fire truck Allie had seen earlier. At least tell me why. Sim asked in a calm tone. Well, like I said, kid, I'll tell you about it real soon. First we need to get you four back home. Said Erland. Sim wiped his eyes and placed the helmet back on his head. Now you're best old duck again. Allie and Zane looked ahead, confused wondering if they were about to run into another fence. A high-pitched whistle came from above. The white and gray building ahead of them erupted into flames. Quickly ducking back under the seats, they all avoided the large bricks and debris that rained down overhead. Sim spotted the gateway next to the red phone booth. Erland parked the jeep and waved everyone out. Sim looked at him, unable to contain his sadness and disappointment any longer. Erland put his hand on Sim's shoulder. He gazed at Sim through the helmet visor. I'll explain everything soon, kid. There's a right time for everything. I promise. Erland wrapped his arm around him. Allie scooped Dublin up out of the car with Zane at her side. Hang in there, kid. Said Erland, with his arm still wrapped around Sim. The hardest days are yet to come, but I know you can get through it. I believe in you. Just remember, it might seem impossible, but no world and no life should ever be left alone in darkness, said Sim. 
Erland smiled at him. Sim hopped out of the jeep, still watching Erland. The three travelers backed away from the jeep, toward the gateway. And be sure you wear something warm next time, shouted Erland, cranking the gears. He spun the jeep around and drove away, disappearing into the smoky streets. Sim watched Erland drive away. He still felt a longing for answers he desperately deserved. Come on, Sam, we've only got three minutes left, said Allie, waiting at the gateway. Sim turned around, wishing he had more time now, more than ever. Merrick, we're ready to come back, said Sim with a grief-stricken voice over his helmet speaker. <laughs>